Welcome back on the Good Morning Artesia Radio Show. County Commissioner John Henry is with us. And uh, let's go ahead and, and continue on with some of the other topics that commissioners worked on yesterday. You know, another topic that came up, it wasn't a voting topic, it was during the comment se section of the, of the agenda, but, um, you know, we've talked about it quite a bit, I, you know, watching the debates this last week, it came up a couple of times in a couple different debates I've watched, and uh, is the climate change discussion, right? Okay. And so, really interesting discussion, it, it was a small portion of it, um, I, I'd really like to have Al on here sometime to kind of expand on it even more, because... We just, he just went to a conference in, I think it was Lee County or somewhere, and, and anyways, one of the guest speakers happened to speak on climate change, which is why he was talking to us about it yesterday, and, uh, you know, I think there's a lot of things that, that folks need to understand uh, out there, uh, especially the younger folks that kind of jump on board with popular trends and just run with it is go and do some actual digging and find out what, what really is going to happen. You and I have talked s a tremendous amount of time battery-powered cars you know electric cars all that good stuff uh, so so we've we've had that discussion but a lot of the discussions that I think and, and you see it in California kind of coming to life right now is they've had solar panels for a really long time now those solar panels are, are have exceeded their life or coming to the end of their life and what are you gonna do with them there mm -hmm. is absolutely no plan because the material in there is is in pretty rough pretty right bad you're not stuff supposed in to there. throw it in the landfill can't just throw in the landfill right. so you're gonna have to and it's much like the wind wind blades we see there's nowhere to throw those they don't know what to do with those um you know the batteries in these cars what are we doing with those because there's not just two batteries or what you know if you had a diesel truck there's you got two batteries or a regular car is one no there's a bunch of batteries and so when those go out what are we doing with these? And so I think I think if you really want to truly talk climate change, you've got to get into the real discussions and go find those folks out there that have written. There's some really great books out there. One I just got yesterday from uh, McCutcheon. He's reading it. Of uh, folks that don't have an interest either way. They just want to put the facts out. Here's the research we've done. Make your own thought. Kind of like Alex Epstein when we a case right. for fossil fuels. Right. I don't have a dog in either fight. Here's what I see. And and I really wish more folks would, would pick up some books like that that aren't leaning either way and just read the facts and then start making decisions. Because what I'm afraid of is when, when things really start getting rough, you're pretty far down that road. We keep talking about the, the brownouts, the blackouts, the things that might be coming. Um, when those start happening, you're, you're far enough down that road, it's not going to be a flip the switch and, and right. it fixes itself. I mean, well, it's going to take... You're seeing it in some states... And in some countries, yeah, where they've had to go back and turn either keep the coal plants on, yeah, or turn the new plants back on, yeah. What if we get to a point where you can't do that anymore because we've gone all in on this right. this green energy, and we've dis we've destroyed the new we've torn them down we've they're gone. Yeah. You you don't have that option to go flip that back on again, yeah. To to solve your energy needs. Exactly. And and what you're seeing is look at look at the states that have gone all in on this green deal. California, Germany as a country has gone all in, and and, and find out what they're paying for electric. It is incredibly expensive to have electricity. Well, in Germany, in they're chopping down trees. Yeah. For firewood because they're not going to have access to affordable energy to heat yeah. their homes this winter. They're tearing down the forests. <laughs> Which, is that is that the outcome that we wanted right. from all of this? Well, and that's what and that, so that was my discussion when I when I was talking, that was what I said is, you know, look, we pay the consequences for bad policy that happened years ago. So, what did I mean by that? And and I can say, well, I understand we don't have a lot of forest area in Eddy County, so why is this your concern? Well, because it's a state concern, and it is a concern to Eddy County because they're running around yelling climate change, climate change, all this wonderful thing, and forgetting that why do the forests look like they do? Why are California having the fires? Why did New Mexico have the fire? It's not because of climate change. It's because we don't manage the forest. Right. They put policies in place a long time ago. That was when I was in elementary school because I remember following logging trucks down the hill almost every day. They put all of those folks out of business the because that was owl. bad because the owl. Mm -hmm. Then we had the butterfly. Now we got a mouse. It's something all the time and we're not managing our forest and that fuel load gets so heavy that when a fire does burn, you're not just burning the entire forest down because, you know, if, if your forest is managed, it'll run through pretty fast, most of them, some of them. Um, but with that fuel load, it's holding it there, and it, it's burning everything to the ground. 
And not only that, it's burning so hot, it's scorching the ground. So nothing wants to come back for a really long time. So because of bad policies in the 80s and early 90s, now in, now in 2000, 2020, all, you know, the fires in California have gone on longer than that, but we're paying the consequences now. And I think that's what I'm trying to get folks to understand is, is that didn't happen in 2017 bad policies in 2022 we're seeing fire no that was early 90s early late 80s when those policies were being put into place and we're seeing the consequences now it, it, it's a building of time you know they've been trying to put these policies in place for a long time when we're not having electricity and, and you know my joke yesterday was well w the second they can't charge their iphone all of a sudden climate change won't exist anymore because right if that convenience is gone all of a sudden it their their thoughts will shift right now it's still convenient to yell all that because you have lights you you have a refrigerator to keep your fo food cool uh, hospitals up and operational everything works so you're not worried about it but the second they'll start but then it might be and i don't want to be a doomsday it, right not doom and gloom but you got to pay attention to the policies being put in place and what will it do in the future and we don't have the the load to to hold this it. is this is going to affect counties as far as maybe access to funds for certain Absolutely. projects that the county wants to do well that if your project that the county wants to do has anything to do with oil and gas right you may not get access to the loans or the funding funding or the or the state uh, uh, credit rating type loans yeah. because it doesn't fit the environmental agenda people don't see that that kind of discussion is going on in the background yeah. but is that perhaps what uh, you, the county is being advised about or some of the information well, was being shared with and you. And what we're really talking about, yes, that's part of it. The other part is when, when lights are out, when things are bad, who do folks call? They don't call the governor. They don't call the, their rep. Their, most of the time, they're going to call their local representatives. They're going to call the county commissioners. They're going to call the city and say, hey, what's the deal? What are you all going to do about it? Whereas the effects were federally or state levels, we're gonna, the ones that are going to have to fix the problems. Um, a perfect example of that is, is the border crisis, right? It doesn't affect federally very often. Right? Now that they're being shipped there, it's affecting them a little bit, right? But but to the most part, they don't have the effect. It's those small towns and counties right along the border that are feeling the brunt of this. The human trafficking, the and fentanyl. And there's the, zero you know. help going towards them. There's yeah. zero dollars going towards them. There's nothing to... So that's why it's important to me to continue to, to talk about these items or issues because... We're the ones that are going to have, have to figure it out. Um, and, and a lot of times, we're, we're not equipped to figure out how to make the grid work. I mean, the county in the cities, we don't have the means to make the grid work. They, this is much bigger than just us. So right. we can talk about all we want, just like the border. We don't have the means to build the fence. I mean, that's a federal type issue. So my concerns are are, are folks when when those do start happening we talk about unfunded mandates it's not a mandate but it's a problem that that we're going to have to attack and and i just don't think counties and cities are equipped and or will ever be equipped to take care of some of the things that are coming because of these massive feel-good ideas that are out there that we really have no thought into what is this really going to do how is this really going to affect the people you know and, and when those electric bills are run up it's shocking how many folks no pun intended. I didn't. <laughs> it's interesting how many folks have, have talked to me just in the last, let's call it month, a month and a half. Because they get their bill. Exactly. And, and they're not looking to me to, well, why is this, that's not their question, but they're, it's a discussion now. Oh, my gosh, mine's up 30 percent. It's up 40 percent. It's up. And, and who does that affect? You know, there's a lot of folks that can, can absorb that and still be okay. There's a lot of families that can't absorb that. And, and that's becoming a real problem. And and those are the folks that I, I, I worry about all the folks, but the folks that I, you're making decisions at that point, what do we do? Do we have electric? Do we have food? Right. We, and, and those are being left behind. And, and I just, I don't understand how a group that is so concerned about that type of environment all the time is creating a worse environment in that group. So yeah. we really got to pay attention to what's going on out there. And, and, I, and I started by talking climate change, but that's to me, what they're trying to push that's where the end result is um we're not fixing the climate where if anything we're going to make it worse for the climate because yeah. of all this stuff that we're doing i saw a stat this week or late last week that in essence since uh the current president has been in office 
they didn't make this equation I did because I live in New Mexico. Mm -hmm. Basically, the population of the state of New Mexico has come across the southern border since the current president has been in office. Yeah. To, if, if you took every person that we know of yeah. that's, that's come across the border and we dropped them in New Mexico, we would double our population. That's how many people have yeah. come across the border, the southern border. And so it's up to counties like Eddy County and Lee County and Otero and mm -hmm. some of these other border counties that are having to confront the issues that come with this massive amount of people that are just flooding across the border right yeah. now and 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 we're worried about climate change right as opposed to some of these real uh issues that are that are going on yeah. so it was just a discussion thing is it, yeah, is it was just to kind a, of keep a, the commissioners aware of exactly you know, keep us aware uh you know letting us know what what was being discussed and and how it it's interesting on because you know there's a lot of votes we have to cast and all that stuff but there's also a lot of things i think we have to pay attention to how is this going to affect us in the long run what what can we do to help um and like i said a lot of times it's just getting our voice out there and continuing to talk um sometimes you think you're being ignored but that's okay if you at least talk at least you got it out there and, and yeah. maybe someone might think you know that sort of makes sense we better back up and and take a look and, and that's what you're looking for i think that's all any of us are asking for is sure. take a harder look at this and make sure it's best for new mexico before yeah. we 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 jump in i could see some of these road projects uh well are you doing the road are the roads being redone the greenest way possible yeah you're, uh -huh. those questions are going to happen which is impossible because i'll let you know everything that goes on the road is an oil and gas petroleum <laughs> product so. i know i yeah. know so. but are you doing it as an environmentally <laughs> yeah. friendly yeah. way possible yeah yeah you know that, that's it you're it's gonna it, it's are, gonna are you gonna go be, is the this. county gonna be able to access the money to be able to do this well we're not you're not ticking all the environmental boxes yeah. on this road project yeah you're just trying to put a road in or fix a road or keep yeah. a road going so yeah. we can I, I, it's kind of scary yeah well look at florida i mean you saw those the the discussions now of you know when florida evacuated what if all those folks had electric cars would they got out it's a good question it's an interesting <laughs> question I, so. you know we're, we're out of time in this segment but i got to tell you a story about a video i watched this morning that's hilarious w uh, involving a hundred and fifteen thousand dollar electric truck oh wow and uh so yeah you'll get a kick out of that <laughs> i may share it on the air this is ksvp our teacher thank you commissioner thank you sir appreciate it